Hello and welcome to GeneSpeak. My name is Vineeth and this is a channel about biochemistry and linguistics. This is the start of a series of videos on biochemistry which are run parallel to a series on linguistics. An introduction to linguistics is already available on the channel and there is a link to it in the description. So, let's get started on today's video, an introduction to biochemistry. If you watch my linguistics video, then you'll guess that I'm going to start with some misconceptions about biochemistry. I think there's just one big one here, and it's that biochemistry is just about studying biology and chemistry at the same time. Kind of like if you were studying history and sociology. Actually, what biochemistry is all about is studying biological function through a chemical lens, looking at the chemical fundamentals of life. Before the 20th century, biological function simply couldn't be explained through the knowledge of chemistry at that time. All of these questions were kind of a mystery to chemists. Sure, biologists could explain them at the macroscopic level, but exactly how and why this was all possible just couldn't be explained as a product of chemistry. This gave rise to the idea of vitalism, the idea that there was some magical vital force that was present in all biological organisms that could give rise to phenomena that were inexplicable by chemistry. A really good example of a biological function that chemistry just couldn't explain was fermentation. Scientists found that leaving out some juice for a few days resulted in bubbles, cloudy stuff that turned out to be yeast, and most interestingly, alcohol. Although it seemed like yeast was a product of fermentation, it was soon worked out that it was the thing doing the reaction in the first place. Still, scientists were stumped by how it performed this chemical reaction. Using sodium hydroxide, they tried to kill the yeast to see if it could still ferment. They quickly saw that it couldn't, so they tried subjecting it to high temperatures instead, but this led to the same results. Every time the yeast cells died, the ability to do fermentation went away. This suggested to the scientists that it was the vital forces of the yeast itself that are doing the fermentation. This was the view held until Edward Buchner in the late 19th century tried something new. Instead of using harsh techniques as those tried before, he developed a pendulum that could gently grind the yeast cells until you were left with just a mushy yeast paste. This could perform fermentation. This marked the end of vitalism, since it was proven that you did not need the live yeast to perform the fermentation. He needed to be very rigorous to prove that no stray cells were making it into the mix. By using microscopes to check for cells and repeating his experiments, he finally published his findings in 1897. Despite having opened a whole new field of science, Buchner had no idea what was going on. The work of his contemporaries suggested that the things doing the fermentation were enzymes, but they didn't know a lot about them. All they were regarded as were things that could do fermentation in yeast, hence their name. This discovery did not just reveal to us how incomplete our knowledge was, but also started a revolution in science. Buchner instantly recognized this and discussed it in his Nobel Prize speech in 1907. If you want to read it, there's a link in the description. In later years, the enzymes in yeast were discovered to be a type of molecular machine that we call proteins, which could perform fermentation as well as a bunch of other functions. In fact, proteins quickly proved to be so fundamental to cellular function that they became central to biochemistry amongst other biomolecules. In parallel, genes became central to genetics. These fields overlap a lot, so it has become common to refer to them together as biochemistry. This makes it clear that biochemistry is not like other subdisciplines. It is far too vast to think of as the intersection of biology and chemistry. I prefer to think of it as a fundament of biology, built with the tools and knowledge of chemistry. In this way, understanding biochemistry is very important to understanding biology at a deeper level. This can lead to some really cool scientific and technological discoveries. And I hope that this channel can shed some light on these and make biochemistry as accessible as possible. If you enjoyed this video and want to know more, click the like button and stay tuned to my upcoming videos by subscribing and clicking the bell icon. The next biochemistry video will be one on the origin of genetics, which was also quite recent and has a very similar history to that of biochemistry. Until then, don't forget to keep learning.